Okay, Melvina. Melvina, oh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? I'm originally from Sonaste, New Mexico. That's on my mom's side, Della Silversmith. But we reside in Oak Springs, and that's on my dad's side, Melvin Silversmith. And you're Navajo? I'm full-blooded Navajo. My clans are the Neg Eji Nishlon, Asan Nishlon. Touching in a short court of Ojibashi's chain, Kiana, Eta Shinella, Hanagani, Eta Shachi. Those are my clans. I'm a proud mother of two. I have ten siblings, nine actually. Four brothers, two passed on. God bless their soul. I have six, five sisters, six with me. So I'm the baby of the family. I'm the youngest. I was taught a lot by my parents. I have two different personalities from both parents. But combining both personalities, it comes out to having a big heart yourself. How was your childhood? My childhood was pretty good. I was being well taken care of, but always got picked on. I always wanted to go with my parents somewhere, but they always chose my brother before me, Merwin Silversmith. And did you finish high school? I didn't finish high school, but I did go to um, Crown Point. I went for my GED, and I took um, nursing class on this side. I pretty much know a lot. I know carpentry, mechanic. I can build you a house if you want shack out here to live like us natives. I'll use cardboard box. But my two kids are safe. They're staying with my ex-sister-in-law, Winifred Watson. So you don't raise your kids? No, she, I gave her custody. I miss my kids so much, but with this virus going on, I ain't trying to harm my kids or my ex-in-laws in any way for that. So, so you're living on the street? Living on the streets. Here in Gallup, New Mexico. Here in Gallup, New Mexico. And so are you using drugs or alcohol? Alcohol is your thing. Alcohol. Right? How long has alcohol been a part of your life? It's been a part of my life since um, high school. I actually think mid-school at eighth grade. That's when I first got hit up by a broomstick by my mom. Because we were brought up well, but in our lifetime, we messed up and the reason why I'm out here is because I wanted to show my people, I have a home, I have a land, I have a ride. I put all that aside to live like my people, to show my people I love them. Every little thing I have, this is all I got right here. What, what, is, what is your drink of choice is it uh... <clears throat> my drink of choice what do you what do you go to most hello this is Gallup New Mexico it's importers I got imported from 505 to 928 but I'm back in 505 so that's my import and that's the best alcohol that would care hangover and what is that importers but when you say import, what, what, what importer, what? Importer vodka. Vodka, okay. And you start drinking typically in the evening and? No, I would buy. Because you're not drunk right now. No, I would buy a half a gallon and it would last me for like two, three days. Just walking the street all night. I hardly get rest, but I'm just glad I know that nobody's hurt. Sharing that, just that little sip, helping someone else. That really means a lot in how much they really appreciate it. So you share your vodka? Mm-hmm. I'm not stingy. You know, every little thing I have, I'll give it out. Like my last meal, and that's meal I just barely got, I'll give it to whoever's hungry. Or I went tell them to share, or the last drink bottle, or I'll give out pints. The way I make money is 
I want to say uh, question mark sell things but I've been finding stuff on the streets brand new stuff I don't know if it was stolen but instead of selling it back I give it out give it to the most person that needs it like a brand new Nike shoes I gave away yesterday and that Nike shoe was like over 179 or like almost 200. Man, living these streets is not, well, I can actually say it's fun. How you make ends meet with each day. How you're gonna survive. How you're gonna keep yourself warm. Sometimes people die on the streets from the cold, right? Yeah, if you overdo your drugs and alcohol, Okay, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I was, when I first came out last year, and uh, July, I think it was, by August, but it was sometimes last year I would spend almost eight months out here. And one guy came up to me, which I haven't seen this day. He gave me a drink of vodka importers. He goes, I know what you're here for. I know what you're about. You're one of them good people. He goes, take a shot at this. So he gave me a bottle. I took a shot. And he goes, I'm going to give you a heads up. This, don't take it to get drunk. This, think of it right and it'll keep you warm. And that was during the cold. And then he busts out a bub, like one of those drug bubs. It was loaded, and I didn't know how to smoke it. He taught me. And he goes, I'm telling you this is because you're here for your people. And I said, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed. And he goes, just take this, and I'll tell you what it's about. So I took the first hit. And not knowing people were following me, people that want to jump me for helping out the elderly and getting their stuff back. And he told me, this will keep you alert. This will tell you, be careful. This is going to give you a heads up on who's coming from behind you. Not knowing better, actually thinking of it and then thinking about our old ways, how smoke, we look through smoke, ashes. And I thought about that. The whole time I was out here, I took alcohol and drugs. But I used it in a good way, not in a bad way. I help people, I help elderly, I help them survive. I seen things that I should have not seen. I could say I've seen the unexplainable, the unexpected. But I explored that adventure. What's, what's the most extreme thing you've seen in your time here on the street? My most extreme is seeing a guy who's the opposite of a Navajo medicine man. I've seen him get lifted up off the ground, frozen. And that guy did not like me. The day I seen him get lifted, and put it into ambulance all frozen, I cried and I prayed. Prayer means a lot. But by morning, the next morning, I got up and I was like, damn, I was worried about the guy so much. They said, now he's walking right there in front of Hojo. I just told my uncle to stop. I jumped off, I ran to him. I said, dude, can I get a hug? And he's like, for what? As I seen you die yesterday. I said, just right there in between Hajjot and Third Street. I said, the way they lifted you, I said, you were frozen, dude. I said, I'm sorry, but you know, it means a lot that my prayers did go through because you're still here walking in the morning. And stupid me, 
I had drinks, I had hits. And I told him, I said, hey guy, I'm not gonna do this, I hate to do this, but shoot man, I said, it's nice to see you live. Offer him that shot, offer him hits, and then he said he was brought back to life. Seeing a lady, an older lady get jumped by three teenagers. Shoot, I go back and I told him, what if that was your mom, your sister, your grandma? Would you like it seeing it? You give her stuff back. She don't drink. She don't do drugs. Can't you guys see that? And they give her a cut on her left eyebrow. People think it's funny. They think life is funny. They make fun of life. That's why they're where they're at right now, stealing from other people. You help somebody out, shoot, God has something returned ahead of you. I find free things. I find brand new shoes. It's only tell me to pass it on. Somebody claims it's theirs. And I tell them, look at you, I've seen you out here for so long and you think it's your shoe when you stole it? Why hang on to something you stole? Pass it on. Because that person you stole from is not going to ever get it back. But they'll see another person wearing it. And for people to be discriminating, being disrespectful, the only way you're going to live out here you're gonna survive is by your own self. You're being honest. You have loyalty. Be independent to live on the streets. You help one, you shall receive help. Either way it works. You disrespect people, you get that same disrespect. How are you gonna get respect when you make fun of a person? If they're disabled, if they can't walk, they fall over, shoot, you go over there and lift the hand. You don't just watch them and make fun of them. That's not. Most people out here think they know better. All the dealers, they're all gone. Now I told them, you guys are disrespecting so much that you're gonna, it's going to come back worse on you. Karma is the B-I-T-C-H. Is there a sex work here, sex trafficking going on in, in New Mexico? Sex trafficking? I know like some of the hotels, they have room for prostitute, and it's my own native girls. But what they get out of it is five dollars. They get a drink, they just get one shot, some shoot up. You see them normal, happy, but once they get on that, they're a whole different person. It's like, how would you call it? They're making fun of themselves, but they don't know that drugs, alcohol is making them look stupid. All these girls here, they're parents. They don't, not one acts like one. They act like gangsters. They act like, you know, like they can hurt somebody. But shoot, once a guy backhands them, they're the ones crying, running. For me as a mother of two, I'm proud to have my beautiful kids. I'm glad they're safe, alive. But I ain't out here to meet another guy. I ain't out here to start trouble. I'm not here to show love and caring again. I just tell them, hey man, love you guys. So, so why are you on the streets rather than with your children? My children are safe. After quarantine, my sister got it twice, her and her girlfriend, and I risked my life to be out here to watch her. The girlfriend won't take her home. She messed up my sister's face so bad that her face is barely healing. I tell them, I watch over them, they sleep on top of the bridge. 
on 3rd Street. I'm afraid that the girlfriend might push her off that bridge. And I stay at the bottom looking out, not just watching my sister, watching everybody. Walkway is a dangerous place. I mean, one person so little makes themselves look big. I say, hey, little, little big man. I said, you don't got no balls to be treating your people like this. I got guys sent after me. I got a knife pulled out to me last night. And I took my sister and her girlfriend. I said, you guys, don't be around me, but just stay somewhere where they won't see you. And I haven't seen them since last night. Do you, do you relate to your Navajo heritage? My Navajo heritage? Yeah, I do. I'm a hand trembler in a good way. I'm here to let people know, watch out. It's not like in no bad way. I heal people. I'm just glad that I have the most two loving, caring parents who taught us well. I don't know if I get it from my mom or my dad's side, but the bond of love I'm showing it. I've seen people get off the street from my words. I haven't seen them, but I do see them other places. They give me a hug and they tell me my words are of encouragement. I'm an independent person. I'm not out here to make fun, not to act like a fool. I'm not out here to fight people. But when it comes to a point, that point will become a point. How else are you going to survive? They take stuff from you and you see someone. They're trying to make you fight. My own people would be like that. And that's not right. I'm out here to show love, caring. How it feels to have love again. Ain't nobody showing it. I gave up everything and this is all I got. I'm ashamed to ask for money. I'm sh ashamed to be like, can I buy with some change? But damn, I'm glad I'm still alive and I still see my people alive the next day with the smile. People discriminate us, other races. When we pan, when my people panhandle telling them to get a job. They don't know what we're going through. We are the first ones that suffered. We are the ones that went into our worlds to survive. We went through the long walk, shoot. You might even be Navajo too, you don't know it. You have a color of Navajo on you. I'm like, what's up Ninja? But I always show love to everybody. I try to keep a drink on me because anxiety is not a funny thing. You see people get DTs, anxiety falling over. People just make fun and walk off. The guy's suffering, the lady's suffering. Who does that? I would do anything to love it, lend a hand, lend a finger. Most people say, I got your back. How are they going to get your back when they just run off when you get into trouble? When someone steps up to you. I tell my people, I got your front. I'll take a hit for you. But I'll dodge it. See, you don't know if I'll, I'll throw a fake left, but I'll knock you out with the right. Mm. I'll straight up kick you in your face without knowing. I'm not here to fight. I'm here to love and care for people. And to see them not around, shoot, I save lives. All right, Malvina. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. But you might be my native, so I'm glad I did this.
But my natives, I love them. <laughs> but they're my ninjas. All right, Malvina. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. And this, love you, Mom, Dad. Love you, Delilah, Draven Watson, my beautiful kids.